Do you know that there is a hidden heart disease risk factor that can triple your chances of a heart attack? Most people have never heard of it. It's called lipoprotein A, or sometimes called LP, little a for short. About one in five people have this risk factor, and most do not know about it. Until just a few weeks ago, I was one of those people. Hi, I'm Valerie, a registered nurse focused on helping people live longer, healthier lives through the power of lifestyle medicine. Today, I want to talk about my recent experience with my own lipoprotein A level, what that means for my health, and why it's something you might want to be considered being tested for. In this video, I'll be sharing a little of my own personal experience to help empower you to become a stronger advocate for your own health. By knowing your lipoprotein A level and taking control of what you can, you can reduce your risks and be more proactive about your heart health. So what exactly is lipoprotein A and why does it matter? Lipoprotein A is a type of cholesterol in the blood that increases the risk of cardiovascular disease. But unlike the other cholesterol particles like LDL, HDL, or triglycerides, lipoprotein is due to genetics. Lipoprotein levels are largely inherited and change very little from the time we are only five. This means that lifestyle choices like diet or exercise usually don't have a big impact on its level. So if you have high lipoprotein A, that doesn't mean that you did anything wrong. It's more about what you inherited from your parents. There are currently no scientifically proven ways to lower your lipoprotein A level. This means that you can have a high lipoprotein A level even if you live a very healthy lifestyle. And you likely will not have symptoms either. Well, until you do have symptoms. And by then, it could be too late. Lipoprotein A is stickier than LDL, which is the other bad cholesterol. High lipoprotein A's levels means that it's easier for plaque to build up on the walls of your arteries. And plaque is that a combination of cholesterol, other fatty substances, and other debris that can accumulate on the walls of blood vessels, causing them to narrow and restrict blood flow. This buildup can eventually lead to blocked blood vessels and heart attacks and strokes. A high lipoprotein A also increases the risk of aortic stenosis. This means that the aortic valve in the heart becomes narrowed, making it harder for the heart to pump blood. When blood flow through the heart is limited, it places extra strain on the heart muscle, which can lead to complications over time. So to sum it up, high lipoprotein A levels can silently raise your risk for major cardiovascular issues like heart attacks, strokes, and aortic stenosis. Because of this, it might be a good idea to know what your lipoprotein A level is, especially if you have a family history of heart disease or are already working to manage other risk factors. Or if you find out that a close family member has a high lipoprotein A. Unfortunately, lipoprotein A is mostly genetic and there are currently limited ways to lower it directly. This can feel a bit frustrating. You might even wonder why even bother knowing this lipoprotein A if I can't do anything about it. By knowing your lipoprotein A status, you can gain an extra piece of the puzzle about your heart health. This can help you make more informed decisions about other aspects of heart health and reduce your overall risk. So let me share a little bit of my own personal story with lipoprotein A. I actually found out about my lipoprotein A level by accident. So one day I saw an ad for a research study that was testing lipoprotein A level. I'm very pro-science, so I decided to sign up. I went and had the test done. It was a very quick and easy blood draw, and they even paid me $45 for my time. I totally did not expect that my level was going to be so high. But when my lipoprotein results came back, it was 150. For reference, under 50 is considered normal, so my level seemed to be through the roof. 
I was definitely a bit shocked and dismayed, especially knowing that having this elevated lipoprotein A increases my heart disease risk about three times, despite that I follow a healthy lifestyle. But here is where I feel fortunate. About four years ago, I overhauled my lifestyle, initially to help with my joint health. I started focusing on an inflammation-fighting lifestyle and adopting other habits focused on lowering my systemic inflammation. Little did I know then that these changes that I made to help improve my joint health might also have saved me from a sudden heart attack. My father's father died suddenly at age 48 from a massive heart attack, so I have that risk. That might have been me if I hadn't accidentally lowered my other heart attack risk factors, even if just by coincidence. So even right now, with not knowing what exactly is going on inside my heart and its blood vessels, I still feel much better knowing that I had taken those steps to reduce my heart disease risk. And even if there is little that I can do to reduce my lipoprotein A level, I still feel empowered knowing that I can still do more to target other cardiac risk factors. I have more research to do and will be sharing that in future videos, so subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you can follow along. But for right now, I am going to share some of the lifestyle changes that I have already made that reduced my risk. These are changes that anyone can make and they can make a difference in your heart disease risk and overall health, whether or not you have high lipoprotein A. So initially I made these lifestyle changes to improve my joint health. I have arthritis in my knees and an ankle. And when my joint pain got bad, I researched the best ways to help that. And the improvement was nothing short of miraculous. Well, come to find out, these changes would also benefit my heart by reducing overall heart disease risk, as well as reducing the risk of many chronic diseases. One of the biggest shifts for me was moving to a predominantly plant-based diet. Most of my meals now consist of whole plant foods like vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and legumes. These foods naturally reduce inflammation in the body and improve cardiovascular health through many different ways. I now aim for at least six servings of vegetables daily. This might sound like a lot, but it becomes easier when you build it into each meal. Vegetables have compounds that directly support vascular health. Study after study shows that eating a lot of plant-based foods improves heart health and lowers the risk of heart disease. Another big change was limiting red and processed meats. Regularly consuming red meat and especially processed meat greatly increases the risk of heart disease and stroke. So cutting back on them can make a big difference. First, let me quickly explain what processed meats are. Processed meat is meat that has been preserved through smoking, curing, salting, or with chemicals. So think of things like um, jerky, bacon, and deli meats. Studies have shown that regularly eating processed meat can significantly increase heart disease risk. Even just two ounces of deli meat per day can increase heart disease risk by one and a half times. So that's only like uh, two slices of deli ham or turkey per day. Regular consumption of red meat also increases heart attack risk. At one point in my life, I never thought I would be able to give up regularly eating the meat that I loved. I was one of those meat with every meal people. But when my joints were on the line, I found out that yes, I could. And now I am so happy I did because this also lowered my heart disease risk. Added sugars, refined grains, and ultra-processed foods were also difficult to give up. But this was another important step. Sugary foods and refined grains like white bread, cookies, candies, pastries can spike blood sugar and lead to inflammation, which isn't good for our blood vessels. I replace these with vegetables and whole grains that provide nutrients that support heart health instead of harming it. Beyond diet, I also began to prioritize sleep and stress management. Getting quality sleep lowers systemic inflammation, helps the body repair, and it's closely linked to better heart health. 
I also began to actively take steps to manage stress. And lastly, I made sure to stay physically active every day. Although I think I can still do more in this area, even something as simple as my daily walk can go a long way in lowering heart disease risk. So while these changes cannot improve my lipoprotein A number, they did greatly improve my joint health and lowered my risk of developing heart disease along the way. Still, I'm not going to lie. It does feel a bit frustrating and even a bit unfair to have this high lipoprotein A level now hanging over my head. But after thinking about it, I'm happy I know this so that I can now take certain actions to ensure my health and longevity despite this. It's very important for me to be proactive about my heart health. I'm a very active person. I frequently venture out into remote wilderness areas and I also rock climb. So I have climbing partners who depend on me out there. The last thing that I want to be is a heart attack waiting to happen. Little symptoms that I might have ignored in the past, I'm going to be taking a closer look at. And I also know that women don't always experience the same classic heart disease symptoms that men do. I worked as a cardiac nurse for many years and witnessed that a woman's symptoms can often be overlooked. So I feel that as a woman, I need to be even more vigilant and proactive. By chance, I had a physical schedule just a few days after I received my results. Doubly lucky that the provider I saw was educated on what lipoprotein A is. Even then, she seemed ready to just gloss over this, and I had to stress my strong family history and my other concerns. I requested a cardiology referral, not just to address my lipoprotein A, but also to have a more informed discussion about my overall risk. I want to discuss my LDL level and best how to manage that. So LDL is the bad cholesterol that we are all normally tested for. Mine has always been borderline high, but I've always dismissed that because of my good cholesterol or HDL was high. But now with this added information, I may want to consider taking additional measures to bring that level down. I also plan to ask for a cardiac CT scan. A cardiac CT scan creates images of the heart and blood vessels. It can detect any buildup of the plaque in the arteries that can lead to a heart attack. This will give me a better idea if I already have or not have plaque buildup in my coronary arteries. My younger brother has already been getting an annual cardiac TC scan for years based on family history alone, but I will likely have to ask. I also plan to request an echocardiogram, which is basically an ultrasound of the heart, and it checks its structure and function and can reveal any early signs of aortic stenosis. I have had one in the past due to having a heart murmur, but I feel it's a good idea to have another one now based on this new information because I have an increased risk of aortic stenosis due to this elevated lipoprotein A. Left untreated, aortic stenosis can weaken the heart, and I want to avoid that at all costs. I have many strenuous activities I still want to pursue, and I do not want to end up limited by a weakened heart. And yes, I am also taking these extra steps to give me peace of mind and to ensure that I am covering all my bases. So enough about me. Why is getting tested for lipoprotein A important for you? Unlike LDL or HDL, lipoprotein isn't usually included in a standard cholesterol test. So if you're concerned about your heart health, especially if you have a family history of heart disease or other risk factors, you might need to specifically ask your doctor to test for it. Knowing your lipoprotein level can be another piece to the puzzle when it comes to understanding your unique risk factors. For some people, Discovering that their lipoprotein A level is elevated might be the prompt that they need to make changes towards leading a healthier lifestyle. For others, having that knowledge might give them the chance to take even more personalized steps, like I am, in managing their heart health proactively. 
even though high lipoprotein A levels are mostly genetic, knowing your level means you can work more closely with your healthcare team to protect your heart in other ways. Knowledge is power, and being aware of your lipoprotein A status is one more way to advocate for your own health and take preventative measures that align with your individual needs. Knowing your lipoprotein A level can empower you to take proactive steps for your heart health. If you have a family history of heart disease or other risk factors, consider asking your doctor for a lipoprotein A test. It's one of those hidden factors that can make a big difference in how you manage your overall health. And even though lipoprotein A is largely genetic, there are still things that you can do to control your overall heart disease risk. So even if you have this lipoprotein A and it's elevated, you can work on bringing controllable risk factors down to lower your overall risk. You can also use this information and know if you need to be more vigilant for signs of developing heart disease. Thank you so much for watching. And if you found this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe to my Nurse Guided Wellness channel. I hope my personal experience with lipoprotein A helps you reduce your risk, improve your quality of life, and helps you stay active doing the things that you love. In future videos, I'll be sharing more about my personal journey with lipoprotein A and diving deeper into what the science says about managing and possibly lowering it. So please subscribe if you're interested in following along. Your support also helps me continue creating content that empowers people to live longer, healthier lives. Thank you for watching. Until next time, take good care of your heart and take good care of yourself. Bye now.